passed away, and see, the new has come. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to stand with you. Say this out loud with me. I'm living my best life. I'm living my best life. Amen. 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 Amen.
Sin don't mean that you raped somebody. Sin don't mean that you did something that had you on Fox 2 News. Sin means you can sit here right now and you need to say sorry for what you were just thinking about. Uh, sin will wake up and say, oh, now it's mine. Sin will put perfume on so somebody else knows they can give you a compliment. A sinner ain't got to do nothing outwardly. A sinner can keep his mouth closed and still be the biggest sinner in the room. That's what Jesus died for. So we got to get out of this. I, I, I'm putting on these arms so people can give me congratulations. So who are you when ain't nobody looking? Your character ain't what people say about you. Your character is who you are when ain't nobody looking. Isaiah 53 and 6 says it this way. And all of us ain't as faithful as we put on. Watch it this way. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So just because you was unfaithful, God put his judgment on a man named Jesus. So every whip, every lash that you deserve, my Jesus took it on his back. If you can't pray, Jesus like that, you might not be in Christ. What's the synopsis? I'm pretending to be a little smart because I showed y'all on the hood. The synopsis of this is through Jesus Christ's death on the cross and his redemptions, humans, that's us, is, are being offered salvation. Y'all smart folks in the room understand the word says offered salvation. Don't mean that he died for all. He died for all that believe. Uh huh. That don't mean just because he died, all dogs go to heaven. You said you were living your best life, brother. Right? Give me some points. Okay. First point, we're going to go this way. The Bible says it this way. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ. First point, we're going this way. That I am living my best life because he redeemed me by his grace. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't getting no shout on that because you might not understand what grace is. Grace is defined as unmerited favor. you couldn't work for. It's favor when you didn't study for the test, but you still got your bachelor's degree on the wall. It's favor when you still marry and if the closet bust open, you know you want to be in the divorce court. Favor gave me victory when I was putting people as the victims. I'm just talking about God. I ain't saying nothing else about what I'm saying, but I'm talking about how he redeemed a sinner like me. I'm redeemed only by his grace. What's that mean? So if I'm only redeemed by his grace, that means that I can't lose my salvation. If I earned my salvation, somebody can take it away. But if it's a free gift, can't nobody put their hands on my salvation. Even when I don't do right, I can't lose my salvation. Even when I'm not as faithful as I need to be, I can't lose my salvation. But I will tell you this, if you are a child of the Most High God, He's so enough going to see about you when you disobey His command. God will tear your high parts up, but He's still going to invite you to dinner. Nothing will separate me from the love of God. Do I have a witness in hell? Got some simple tendencies. And I talked to somebody in here that you know that you've been redeemed by the Most High. But every now and then your mind slip and think about things you ain't supposed to think about. Sometimes you pull the car down and look a little too long. Sometimes you have to keep clapping now. Sometimes you don't give the way you're supposed to give. I ain't just talking about money. Daddies go home and spend time with your kids. Mothers spend time with your daughters. How much me time you really need to have a conversation with your baby so she ain't trying to get it from somebody in the world. 
John 3, 14 through 17 says it this way, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted. Is there anybody in here who thinks they should be lifted up? Jesus. I'm talking to redeemed folk in here. I want to talk to somebody that was saved with crack cocaine in your blood. I want to talk to somebody that was saved with crack cocaine in your pocket. I want to talk to somebody that was saved and you read that Gideon Bible after you've been at the hotel for three hours.
I'm united with Christ. Yeah, yeah. That's so heavy, I got some more to talk about. But, but when you're united with Christ, have you ever been in a checkout line and somebody looked at your groceries and they was in a rush and you was taking a little too long with your coupons? And they said, you know what? I got that 1995. Let me get in front of you and I'll pay for your groceries. I just want to give you a story that if you are a part of Jesus, you ain't got to wait in line. He already went before you. And everything that you're looking forward to, See, we don't know how to be in a relationship. I stay here, I'm gonna get out. Some of y'all knew, won't y'all come back? Watch this. <laughs> we think that being in a relationship means being in the same room with folks. But when you were a dean, you start hearing things that hurt your man pride, start hurting your woman's intuition. That just because y'all in the same car don't mean that y'all intimate right then. Hold on, it's a PG section. Keep your mind right, sisters and brothers. Intimacy don't always mean sex. But if you try to get to, to curb things, you better learn how to be intimate. So what you talking about, preacher? That you need to learn to ask, how was your day? Not when you're trying to get it on, but you need to learn how to start the crock pot before you get home. Y'all can give me a prayer for me. Pass the prayer for me back right there. <laughs> the assumption that Paul is making that since you are in a relationship, a covenant with Christ, that some things have changed about you. It's about to get real quiet. I got my preaching out the way. It's lecture time. And there should be some changes since you are in this new committed relationship with Jesus Christ. Being in a relationship with Christ means that you must divorce yourself from some people. If you want to give your all to Jesus, you got to give some people some nosebleed seats into your life. You allow some people curbside seats into your life, and they're not trying to believe, walk, or pray like you. Why are you letting toxic people into your love affair? You need to tell people they don't have free access to your life. I'm walking with Jesus. I'm trying to think of things differently. I'm trying to go to different places. And if you're trying to go higher, you can't hang with people that's dumber than you. Watch out and I'll pray for me. If you're trying to go higher, you need to get you some new smart friends. You want your prayer life to increase? You need to be something around somebody that make you shame every time prayer comes up. What you been doing today? I've been in my closet all morning. I prayed for 10 minutes, thought I was doing good. You've been in the closet all day? You should be around some people that have faith that they just believe God. They believe God that whatever comes my way, God has already orchestrated the end. You need to be around some people that says that I'm not broke. Every day going forward, I'm getting richer and richer and richer, and I ain't talking about money. You don't need to hang around people with a bunch of money. You need to hang around people with a bunch of favor. Because favor will give you access to the president of the bank when you ain't got no money. Your mind should be different now that you're in relationship with Jesus. Let's talk about the word. Philippians 2 and 5 says it this way. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Oh, I love it. Y'all got real quiet. This one is even worse. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is Paul trying to say here? If we think about things in our natural mind, we can't do things God's way. If we think of things with our own mind, we're going to handle things with our own way. Okay, I need to talk to some good people in here. 
If somebody cuts you out and you're walking with Jesus, the Bible says you give them the other cheek. But if you handle that situation with your own mind, you will put your hands on somebody. Uh, he said, I want you to do things differently. Since now you're in a committed relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Can we go a little bit further? Here's the rest of the verse. He says next that he is, or she is, a new creation. <laughs> a new creation. Our next point, first point, he redeemed me through his grace. Y'all with me so far? Watch this. He recycled me because of his grace. Yeah. He recycled me because of my grace. Can I give you some Bible? The Bible says, well, all we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. I don't like that scripture. I want to tell you a little story about recycling. Recycling has a process that involves three main steps. Y'all ready to go? The first step is you got to collect things that are recyclable. It's going to make sense in a minute. After you have been collected or called, now the Bible says there's a process that the recyclables have to go through. I call that the sanctification process. That he takes all your old, he justifies you on Calvary, now he's shaping you into the image and the, the fellowship of God, and the end result is a recycled piece of something that can be used for better source. serve a just God that's full of wrath that had all the authority to look upon us as sinners who wasn't thinking about God and could have easily let us die in our sins. Could have easily let that car roll off the road when we was inebriated. The same God could have let us die in that hospital room but he took all of the things we didn't do and he says I'm not worried about how wrong you are your potential, not as a problem, but I'm going to take all your bad, and I'm going to recycle you, and I'm going to use you to my glory. Somebody's going to walk up to you after you've been recycled, and you can tell them, I remember when the Lord was working on my custom tongue. I remember when the Lord was trying to make me a submissive work. I remember when I tried to beat my chest and do it my way at home. But the Lord somebody, don't give up on the process. Yes. He recycling you to make you better. Yes. If you get out of the recycling bin too early, you're going to look all deformed. You know what people look like when they're going through the process and they try to go backwards. You find yourself at the club and you can't dance no more. You find yourself at the club trying to look good. I'll just have water and spritz the so it look like I got a drink. You try to pump fake for the world, but God is trying to renew you and recycle you. You don't fit in that place no more. Come to the notice of what God is trying to do in your life. I don't want to wait. Nobody tell God, I don't want to wait. I keep hearing all these married men quote this scripture and to get on my ever loving nerves every time I hear a married man quote this scripture. If a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. I roll and then he obtains favor from the Lord. Why come I can't go to church and have it my way with whoever I want to on my time? Be 
Because now that's the old thinking. Yeah. When God gives you a new understanding, we can't be comfortable living the way we used to live. The Bible is clear that all fall short of the glory of the Lord. We don't make some mistakes, but we shouldn't feel good living in it. All right now. The Bible says it this way. That sometimes, many of us have gone to church for a long time, but we've never met Jesus. Romans Romans tells it this way. In Romans 3 and 10, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. Y'all know that scripture? I take it a little deeper. Romans 3 and 23. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Y'all heard that scripture? I read it again slowly. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I got some good news for you. Romans 6 and 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. Somebody say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. There's that little word in again. The only reason I'm going to heaven because I'm in Jesus. See y'all, some of y'all grew up on this scripture. I got one more Romans row. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You ain't got to do cartwheels down the aisle. You ain't got to see Jesus for yourself. All you got to do is believe in what you heard and recognize that you saved by faith. Here, whenever a person experiences conversion, he or she really becomes, watch this, a new person. All right, all right. When you hear a new person, we sang a song in the church coming up. He says, I, I, I looked at my hands, and my hands look new. I, I looked at my feet, and, and they do too. what the Bible has given us figuratively. Now watch this. You are a new thinker in Christ. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm trying to give you a new character, but you're still bound by sinful flesh. Yeah. Right. Every morning you'll be tormented for your sinful flesh wants to do what it wants to do. But your new spirit wants to do things God's way. So you find yourself this way, sitting on the edge of the bed, Wondering if you should respond to that text. Hey, big head. I got to be And you find yourself worn because your flesh want to go ahead and run through there. But your spirit, man, says, I'm trying to walk this new life because I'm living my best life. And I know if I give in to the gratification of my flesh, tomorrow I ain't going to feel like getting out the bed because I know I disappointed God. And I want to encourage somebody today. Even if you feel like you disappointed God, nothing can separate you from the love of God. If you know somebody in your phone and you can't take no text from them after 9 p.m., you better go ahead and delete them. I'm going, I'm moving on. Watch it. It ain't the people who weep that say they need help that fall. It's the people that's strong that say they'll never fall that fall straight through the floor. If you know somebody makes you feel a certain kind of way, go the other way. Strange for a little change. God still loved 
They move on. I'm not almost out of here. Next portion says, old things have passed away. I love this portion because the devil's best tactic is to remind you of your past. Do I have a witness in here? And as soon as you feel like you're going to step out in faith, the devil want to remind you of the last time you failed. I'm the only one in here. As soon as you're ready to believe God for more, the devil reminds you of the last time you was in lack. The devil doesn't want you to trust God. He wants you to trust your faith. He wants you to trust in you and not him. All right, now. Here we go. Old things have passed away. He redeemed me by his grace. I love it. He recycled me because of his grace. Yeah. Watch this. He repositioned me through his grace. He repositioned me through his grace. And I'm on the clock, I gotta go. I'm reminded of a story of a man that Jesus went up on the shore. And when Jesus went up on the shore, the Bible was clear and let us know that this was a wild man. He was a wild man who lived in the graveyard. In the graveyard, he was comfortable around dead people and dead things. He felt more comfortable in the graveyard than around common people. The Bible says that he tore his clothes off and he would cut himself and he would howl at the moon. As soon as you start taking the prayer 
request after 11 p.m. You know what? Uh, it ain't you. Uh, it's me. <laughs> God has delivered us from bondage. He has set us free. But unfortunately, when I was a young man, there was a, a little bit of dog in this fist gig. And this dog would run and bounce up against the gig every time we walked past innocently and not bothering that dog. But as soon as the owner left the gate open for that dog, the dog came running for us and we thought we was gonna have to put the Nike Cortez to work. But as soon as the dog got to the fence line, he stopped in his tracks. Even though the gate was open, he was conditioned to stop at a certain point.